everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome to my craft room tour. Um, one of the things about my room is that pretty much everything is out in the open and visible. So I like to have all my supplies where I can see them, all my ink pads and everything, so that I can sort of stand in one place and look at all my stuff and see what I want to do next. So, um, so you'll find that a lot of my stuff, maybe it looks a little messier because I don't keep it all nicely tucked away into pretty boxes and all that. So, but it's functional and I, that's the way I like it. So this is my room and it's actually not a room because if I go this way, you'll notice that that's the stairs and the stairs come up to my room. I was a little worried about the noise with my kids sleeping, but it seems to be okay. Um, anyway, so these are the walls that I had to deal with, the yellow, because that's the color of my house, so I couldn't change that. So um, I added a little bit of lavender and kind of some burgundy and black, and then I kept everything else pretty neutral. So let's get started. So this is my work surface. It is uh, just a table, a bar table that I got at Ashley Furniture. It's black. And I keep all the things that I use all the time handy. So I have this spinning carousel, and I'll show you this. I got this at uh, Hobby Lobby. It's by the Paper Studio. I keep things like um, water brushes, paint brushes, bone folder, glues, adhesives, uh, scissors, pens, pencils, rulers, all that stuff. So um, this is a great, great uh, little piece here for your desktop. I keep some baby wipes, and then I also keep a box of um, acrylic blocks. And in this box is just the full set of Stampin' Up! acrylic blocks because I find that those are all I really need. Every size I need is just in that collection. So that's all that I have in there and they're really ergonomic. They're stored in this photo box that I got at Joann's for like 40% off. Um, it's this, these nesting photo boxes and they work great. And I'll show you how I've used some of the other ones. This is just some trash and my craft mat right here, my Tim Holtz Ranger craft mat. Um, and then, of course, I have my trimmer, which I use all the time, and this is made by Cutterpeed, and it's a fantastic trimmer. I find that it cuts a really nice line, and as you can see, it's broken right there. It's because it actually it's, extends out to 12 inches, but every time I walked by the table, I would snap it off, and I did that on a few of them, and I figured, well, I don't really need it that far out. So I find that it, it actually works for me just like this. Now to the right of the, the work table, I have the Alex set of drawers uh, from Ikea. I love this. It's got three smaller drawers and three um, deeper drawers. And um, I store everything in here that I use all the time. So uh, let me show you a few things that I keep in here. In the top drawer, I keep all of my Nina Solar White cardstock, a big stack of it because I use that the most. I keep my mini uh, scoreboard by Martha Stewart because I use that pretty much on every card. And then I keep my color charts. So I'll show you a couple of the color charts I have here. This is Copics. I put this on my blog and these are my favorite combinations. Um, and so whenever I'm looking for a good combination to use, I'll pull this out and see if it's on this sheet. Um, if not, then I'll pull out my bigger Copic sheet, which is right here. And oops, this is every Copic color that I have. So whenever I want to choose the colors I'm going to use for a card, I always check this chart first. Never ever do I ever go to my marker stash to pull colors. I always come here and I see which colors I want to use together, and then I'll go pull the markers from my container. I do the same thing with the... Uh, Inktense pencils. So this contains all of the colors that I have. I colored them. Uh, the left hand side here is them direct to paper. And then I kind of washed it a little bit to the right with some water and that way I can see what, how it looks as a watercolor. Again, I check this without looking at the pencils when I'm choosing my colors. And then finally, my Distress uh, ink pads. I cut a little square punched a little square out of Nina Solar White cardstock and I inked them up with the foam applicator and then I put them on these charts by color um, and labeled them. So, and these are actually um, temporarily stored here. So, I use Tombow Mono Multi Glue so I can actually pull them off here and mix them up and kind of see what they look like next to each other and then put them back when I'm done. Okay. The next drawer down has some adhesives, um, 
Just some stuff I use a lot, like my Stampamajig, some dimensionals, some masking tape. I've got the um, remote control for my video camera. Uh, so that's the second drawer. The third one, as you can see, these drawers haven't gotten cluttered yet because they're, they're brand new. Um, so the third one, I keep my stamp cleaner, which I use all the time, my tape runner, um, and then this envelope punch board that I just got. The fourth drawer, which is the first deep drawer, I store all of my distress inks. Um, I like to look at the inks from the top so I can see which one I want to use. Um, so I haven't labeled them on the side. I don't store them on their sides. I just store them flat in this drawer because it works great. Um, and that way I can just kind of open it up and look at what I've got and pull what I need. The next drawer down contains um, a bunch of other ink pads. So over here on the right, I have the whole line of uh, Simon Says Stamp. I've got a whole bunch of Hero Arts here. I've got the dye inks and also some shadow inks. This is uh, the Memento Lux pigment inks, which I'm totally loving right now. And I've got some really pretty colors with that. I store them in order of the rainbow, so red to purple. Um, and then here are some he Hero Arts neon ones and then some other cube um, shadow inks by Hero Arts. Now these inks are stored in cassette holders. So you know the cassettes that we used to listen to music on. I had some in the back of my closet and so these are drawers that I pulled out of um, a cassette holder and I put my ink pads in there and they work great for storing ink pads. Okay and the last drawer, the bottom drawer, has my heat tool in it and just a bunch of punches. Um, all of my other punches are stored still in my old craft room on curtain rods because I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to store them in here. So right now I just kind of pulled my favorites and put them in this bottom drawer. And so these are the ones I'm using at the moment. And if I need another one, I need to go to my other craft room. But I really find myself not using punches as often as I used to. So I'm going to kind of keep them here in this bottom drawer and see how it goes before I do anything else with them. Um, I also have this paper crimper over here, which I always say I need to use, and then I just always forget to use it. So maybe I'll, I'll use it sometime in another card. Okay, on top of this uh, Alex unit is my Stampin' Up! ink caddy. Um, I store a lot of Stampin' Up! inks, but I also store a lot of the other inks that I use a lot. So, for example, I store my Versamark ink, I store um, the Versafine brown and black, the Memento brown and black, um, a lot of blacks and browns that I, that I use on a regular basis. I store my white inks, my color box white ink. Um, and this, this little unit rotates pretty easily. Um, so I can turn it and it's a really good, efficient use of ink storage space. At the top I just have some re-inkers and just kind of some junk perfect pearls and a pencil sharpener and stuff like that. So I, um, so I really love this ink caddy. Okay, so backing away from this unit, and this is going back to my work table and, oh, my dogs, Lucy and Daisy. Hey, pups. They're always there for me. Okay, and then I've got this um, shelving unit. These are two units, actually, um, that are together, and they're made by Ikea. It's called the Besta line. Um, they're really solid. They're very deep. The shelves are deep, which is why I chose this one. Um, I looked at the Expedite, but I felt like the cubby holes were a little too small at 13 by 13, and I needed something wider to store multiple things in, so, um, so I ended up with this. I'm really super happy because the shelves are also adjustable. And the back, if you notice in the back, I actually put some wrapping paper, and I used some Scotch poster tape to just um, wrap that little panel in the back before I inserted it, which I put the whole bookshelf shelf together pretty much by myself. My husband helped me stand it up a little bit and get it all straight up there. But for the most part, it was pretty easy to put together and it was easy to wrap those back shelves and that way I get something interesting to look at in the back. So let's see. On the uh, first shelf, I have some um, wooden Hero Arts background stamps. They're mostly Hero Arts. Um, and it, they're kind of, they're propped up in the back on um, like a, plastic shoe box. I need to get a better solution for that, but I would like to see all my backgrounds at a glance so I can figure out which one I, I want to use. And this is actually the majority of my stamps, believe it or not. Um, I don't have a huge collection, I don't think, but um, I have these three shoe boxes and I purchased them at Container Store and I think they were like $1.80 a piece. And um, in the first one over here, these are Hero Arts. So 
I keep all my same brands together. So this has all the backgrounds, all the images, um, all the different hero art stamps I have. The middle one, I have a lot of penny black stamps, so I keep all my penny black in this container. And then finally over here on this side, I have all the other ones. So my favorite things, paper smooches, lawn fawn, um, Avery L, all those are, I store on that, on that uh, side over here. Um, and then if I go down one more, this is my color shelf. So I have Stampin' Up! markers over here. I have my container of Copics. I have my distress markers. Here's that little new seasonal add-on distress marker set. And then over here I have all my stickles and liquid pearls. In the back I added some of those distress paints that I have and a little cup there for watercolor when I need it. Now as far as my Copics go, I've kind of switched things up a little bit as my collection grows. So I was storing them in a smaller acrylic container, so I had to increase my size because I got more markers. Um, but I found this at Container Store. It's really sturdy, and what I like about it is that it stands up all the markers like this and I can see them at a glance so I can, know, so I can quickly pull the colors that I want. Um, and some of these holes were a little bit too big to fit the markers that I have. Maybe I'll, I'll grow it. Um, but what I ended up doing was buying inserts. So as you can see, this one pulls out. To, to make the hole a little bit smaller. And then I can store some other colors around it if I want to, but I didn't need it, so I store them by color category. Um, okay, and then if you go down one more shelf, you'll see I have all of my colored pencils. So I have my Ink Tense, my Color Soft, Prismacolor. Um, those are all just stacked up right there. And then in this container I have, um, at the top, I've got some tools, you know, like paper piercer, piercing mat, um, uh, let's see, some plates here that have like the different holes in them for different patterns. Um, and then in this drawer, I've got all my twine stored in balls pretty much. I mean, if it comes on a, on a piece of paper, I'll keep it on there. Otherwise, if it's like that embroidery thread that you just buy um, in a strand, it all kind of gets tangled up, but whatever. Um, and then finally in this drawer is all the stuff that I want to use but I never use. And mostly it's kind of things I hope to use with my scrapbook and just sort of butterflies and things like that. Now, the bottom is this just plastic crate that I think I got. Actually, I got it at a container store. Um, and this contains all of the products that have come into my craft room that have not yet been used. So whenever I get a shipment of something, I put all my stuff in here. And um, so as soon as I use it, like two or three times, I'll put it away with all the other supplies that are like it. Um, but until that time, I like to keep it in here so I remember that I need to use it. And I'm getting a little stressed because I do have quite a few products in here. Okay, so coming back up to the top, this shelf, which is right next to the Hero Arts background stamps, these are my Stampin' Up! stamps. So, I, you know, Stampin' Up! has retired quite a few of the ones that I had. I used to have a huge collection. Um, and now I just keep kind of a nice modest number of stamps that are currently active because I like to use active stamps on my blog So if you're interested in it, you could purchase it um, And so these are the ones that are active I have some that are not active that I keep in the other room and I use those for scrapbooking um, This is all my paper and what's interesting here is um, these these uh, folders right here, so I got these at Target and I store scraps in these. So each is a different kind of, the way I started collecting this was uh, through Stampin' Up! color collection. So this one is just neutrals, and I store more than just Stampin' Up! paper. But I'll show you. Try to hide the camera here. And you open it up, so I have tabs for each of the colors. Um, and so you see Nina has one paper tray, I've got some Strathmore watercolor paper, that wood grain Simon Says stamp. And so I just put a sample in the tab and then I store them in the little folders. And so when I need like a little small piece of something, I come here first. And so this, this folder contains the neutral colors. I've got a folder for bright colors, you know, subtles and things like that. And I just store them right there. These are just 12 by 12 solids. These are 8.5 by 11 solids, mostly Stampin' Up! papers. Um, I have them sorted by color collection. I have little labels right there. Um, and then I've also got 
um, just miscellaneous stuff like some Hero Arts paper, some of my Strathmore, Strath, ugh, Strathmore watercolor paper, um, those Sizzix adhesive sheets that I was using. Um, I also have some a, um, acetate, I think it's called, the clear trans transparencies, and I'm using that on a card next week. Okay, and then the next shelf has all my embossing powders, which I store in Tupperwares because it's easy to um, spoon out. Um, this is a bunch of Faber-Castell products. They fit nicely in this holder, which I think I got at Target, actually. There's some pastel pencils. There's some crayons, some watercolor pencils. These are all my gelatas, and these are my big brush pens and some Pit Artist pens also. Um, the, these boxes, I, I have a few of them actually. I got them at Ikea. They were like $8 a piece. And most of them don't have anything in them right now because I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, this one actually has, if I read the label, it says extra adhesive. So you know, when I run out of a certain adhesive, I'll put some extras in there. So nothing that I really use on a regular basis. Okay. A little, few more stamps. These are retired Stampin' Up! stamps that I still use a lot. A box of miscellaneous My Favorite Things, just some woodblock stamps that didn't kind of fit anywhere. Um, some other containers of adhesive, sponges, some other embossing powders. Um, this has some packaging for dyes, and I'll show you my dye storage in a little bit. This is just some more paper, some extra Whisper White and craft cardstock, and some other watercolor paper and things like that. Um, this is a container with my embossing powders, glitters, sprays, all my dilution sprays, um, some firework sprays, the beads and things like that. This has um, like gems, so pearls. These are the ones I use, let's just be honest, okay? I use these rhinestones and these pearls pretty much exclusively, I want to say. But I can always take a Copic marker and I color the pearl any color I want. I can take a Copic marker and I can color this rhinestone any color I want to match my project. So rather than trying to buy, and the thing about these is that they come in multiples of each size. So the worst thing is like you you're, you find one of these packs, which I, I do love the colors, but I need more than just three of one size. So these, this kind of solves my problem. Anyway, I still have all of them, and I will go to them occasionally, but for the most part I use those. These are my Twinkling H2Os. Thank you, Melba. Um, I've got um, a storage here that I used to store my ink pads and my distress ink pads. So if you have a few ink pads that you like that you want to store, I recommend this. This is from Joann's. It's just some pull-out drawers, and you can store them face up so you can see the tops. Um, this is just a photo envelope, or uh, photo box that stores A7 envelopes, which is the 5x7. Okay, coming back up here. This shelf is just for cards that people have sent me or my girls have made me, um, and I just display them there. This is where I keep all the cards that I have made, and this is the fridge bin, which uh, has the two sections, and I think it's, I guess it must be five and a half inches wide on this side and this side, and then it goes deep, and you can see I have dividers. So this is all, these are all the thank you cards, these are birthday cards. It looks like there's a ton of cards here, and there actually are. Um, most of these cards are cards that I've made years and years ago that I just have held on to because I never thought they were good enough to send out. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do with that. But all the ones that I make on my blog, typically I send them out pretty much right away. Um, and this one just stores some A2 envelopes. I've got some ribbon down here, which I store in these containers. Again, Joann's. Um, really simple. I used to store them in the Stampin' Up! containers, but they weren't working for me. I don't use ribbon a whole lot, so I don't feel like I need to be as organized here. Um, this is for trim and lace and um, kind of similar to ribbon. I don't really go to this area a lot, which is why it's kind of off, you know, on the right-hand side that I keep this stuff. Some more cleaners, stamp, stays on cleaner, um, Stampin' Up! refill cleaner. This is just a piece of paper I made and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with. Um, another one of those boxes, and then I haven't figured out what to do with that. So that's pretty much, there's my um, tripod that I just got. Okay, so that's pretty much the shelving unit. At the top, I just stored some family photos. I took my favorite picture of each of my daughters, and I put it into a canvas. Um, and 
and just put it up there. If I go to the right here, uh, there's this uh, canvas painting that I made. I found that saying on Pinterest. I just thought it was really cool. So anyway, that's that. Okay, so I backed it up to the back of the room where I was, and that's the window. And now I'm going to pan across to this side. And I have a little sitting area. I bought these um, chairs from Ikea. I think they were like $69 a piece. I found those throw pillow pillows at the sale or the clearance uh, rack at uh, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, sorry. Um, and then I just have my clock and um, over here, I asked my girls to paint me a uh, canvas for my room and my older one painted me an owl because she knows how much I love owls and my other one painted a heart with mom in the middle and some kisses and hugs, that's just the way she is. Um, anyway, and then I made this centerpiece here um, out of a stretched piece of canvas. I put some batting on it and some fabric and stapled it on the back and put some rib did, did some crisscross ribbon. It's called a French memo board. And then I just colored some letters and attached them using a glue gun and some T pins at the top. And so what I store here are cards that um, I haven't videoed yet, like I've created, but I haven't done a video for them yet. Um, and right now, these are all ones I've already done, so I didn't want to give anything away. I just put some other cards up there. But the cards stay really well on that, and I, I'm, really, I'm really liking the way that that's turned out. Can you hear my dog's panting? <laughs> okay, so uh, on this side, I didn't get to show you really, is a bunch of built-ins. And because I like everything to be visible, I'm really not using the built-ins very much. Uh, but I use my... Um, Sizzix on this side, so here's my Big Shot. I use my Big Shot quite a bit. Um, I just keep the standard pieces there so, so that I can quickly use it. In this photo box that I got at Joann's, the nesting photo boxes, I'm storing all my embossing folders. So that way I can just sort of flip through and see which ones I want to use. And then this is my die storage, which was a huge mess in a drawer. And it's amazing how this huge drawer had so many different dies in it, and now it's compressed into this little itty-bitty box. Um, that's what happens when you organize. So this is from Stampin' Storage. They're magnetic cards. They're 5 by 7 They're kind of chipboard cardboard on the back. And, um, and so the, the dies stick to them because they're magnetic. So they're not really tight. They're just loose enough to pick up pretty easily. But I'll, you can watch as I put it back in. It just sticks right there, and it doesn't come off. I was kind of worried about um, them sticking to each other, but they don't stick to each other at all. And so I just created a little label because I always have to put the supplies on my blog. That way I know what it is, like what brand it is, and I can just flip through everything. And I think what I might do is create some dividers here, just kind of like I did with my cards. And, you know, like basics, labels, shapes. Um, and then I just flip through these, see which one I like, and take it over to my table. And it's really super easy. Going a little bit more to the right here is my um, foam applicator storage. I was using just the bottom, these colors, there's eight of them. And I found that the, it was pretty much good enough for my use. Uh, for Christmas, I asked for another set with the extender. Um, it's not something I would have bought for myself, so that's why I asked for it for Christmas. And then you can tell, I just put it together. I haven't even started using it. But I wanted to have like a light blue and a dark blue, a red and a pink, rather than using the same one for reds and pinks. Um, so I might have like a light purple, dark purple, that sort of thing. So that's that. And then I have um, my 12 by 12 paper storage. Um, I have it divided by like some basic gray and um, my mind's eye and all that stuff. And then I have Stampin' Up! ones. And uh, I use it mostly for scrapbooking, but I have it here because a lot of times this is where I'll pull my paper to put in the background for a card photo. And so that's kind of why it's in this room. Okay, so I backed it up to where we started. And then I just want to show you this one last thing, this back wall here. Um, so uh, my daughters and I like to paint, and so we used to actually paint on this table that I'm using in this room all the time. I've got some Dick Blick paints that, um, that we use. And so whenever we, we do a painting, I'm, I'm, I'm using this wall to kind of display whatever the latest paintings are. So these are the things that we've done, and so I'll just kind of switch them out as time goes by. Okay, so one last look at the big picture here. 
And this is my room, and it's got a lot of sun, which is great. I love coming in here in the afternoons. And sometimes um, I'll actually get my lunch and sit in those chairs right there and just relax because uh, it's just so nice and peaceful up here. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know. I will put photos, actually, on my blog so you can get a closer look at some of these things. Um, and I will see you next week with the next video.